Your work is essential to fostering innovation and creating the better world we all want. A lot of people say they want to pursue their dreams and they wait too long to do it. The best time to start pursuing your dreams is right now. Go ahead and write down exactly what you want to do and how you want to do it and put that down on a piece of paper and write it down every single day. That way your motivation will continue to push through every day and you'll notice what you want to do every single day. And you will know your long-term plan so that you can constantly work on it day in and day out and improve yourself in those categories that you need to in order to become successful in that area each and every single day so that it'll eventually add up to you becoming successful because you put in all the work beforehand. If you're lucky enough to get a good education, then you can find that fulfillment in a, in a variety of ways. There's so many people out there that just talk about wanting to pursue their dreams and sit around and never really take an action to truly pursue and go after what they want to. They'll just sit around and talk about how they would like to do this one day, yet never really try and go out and do that. They'll just mention it and say it here and there that it would be a good thing to do for them, but they never do any progression towards it, which is the biggest problem nowadays is so many people are lazy and just think things should come to them without working hard. And a lot of people, when they fail, they just give up. When in actuality, you need to get up every single time you fail because that next time you fail, that can be the key to learning to what it takes to become successful. Be increased and that go back into science and math education. At the private school I went to, there were other kids whose families were better off, like they had a Porsche or something, but it wasn't that, that big of a deal. My thing was that I just loved doing software, I loved hiring people, and I was stunned when it ended up being so valuable. Because I always had to be careful that we wouldn't hire too many people. I was always worried because I was people who worked for me were older than me and they had kids, and I always thought, well, what if we don't get paid? Will I be able to meet the payroll? So I was always very conservative about the finances. And then when we did go, then I was kind of stunned at what it multiplied out to. There are some really phenomenal teachers, and so the dream is that you could take that top 10% and have them help the others to get best practices uh, the best teaching ideas to spread all over the country. The ability to go to the local public school or charter school and uh, engage with the kids, mentor kids, uh, talk about the kind of work you do, there's huge opportunities there. With the challenges, uh, say in Africa, uh, part of it's people's voice. Uh, there's a real question now whether the U.S. sort of uh, takes this less than 1% of our budget that saves tens of millions of lives. I had this high potential somehow and that I was not taking advantage of it. You know, the environment I'd been in, sort of being a goof off was more socially rewarding than being that serious. And it was public school, you know, so they weren't pushing people all that hard. You could read the textbook in the first week and, you know, sort of there wasn't anything interesting going to happen the rest of the, the school year. And so they had me take an exam to go to a private school. And I thought, well, should I pass this exam or not? You know, you could fail it and they wouldn't, you wouldn't have to go. That sort of violated my sense of integrity that, you know, hey, I'm good at taking tests. I don't want to get confused about that. So I was admitted and they encouraged me to go. It was a boys' school. You know, here people were studying. And at first, because I, I didn't get great grades, they had me in a study hall. And a few people who got really good grades didn't have to go to the study hall. And nobody knew, you know, that I was actually clever. So, you know, they were actually treating me. Well, it's always important to try and be objective about where we are. As media gets better at showing you uh, tough things going on in the world, that's potentially distortionary because things that were very, very bad in the past, you just didn't have that same visibility of. It, objectively, by almost any metric, uh, the number of people getting educated, the how long people live, the reduction of disease, even if you pick, say, World War II as the time boundary, how democratic governments are, period, since World War II has been unbelievable. The reduction in violence, the improvement in literacy, the improvement of health is phenomenal. Even if you take the last period of time, in 1990, over 12 million children under the age of five, you know, people are way more at risk of dying in their first five years than any other point. And it was about a bit over 10% of all the kids were dying. What I remember, above all, about Harvard was being in the midst of so much energy and intelligence. It could be exhilarating, intimidating, sometimes even discouraging, but always challenging. 
It was an amazing privilege. And though I left early, I was transformed by my years at Harvard, the friendships I made and the ideas I worked on. But taking a serious look back, I do have one big regret. I left Harvard with no real awareness of the awful inequities in the world, the appalling disparities of health and wealth and opportunity that condemn millions of people to lives of despair. I learned a lot here at Harvard about new ideas in economics and politics. I got great exposure to the advances being made in the sciences. But humanity's greatest advances are not in its discoveries, but in how those discoveries are applied to reduce inequity. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you haven't, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and go ahead and hit that like button for us, and leave something in the comment section for us to look at.